I'd like to welcome everybody to our Knowledge Education Series event. The goal for these webinars is that there is a lot happening in the technology industry, and it definitely can be overwhelming for those not in the industry to keep up on all the information and technologies available. We hope these sessions can bring some clarity to the different technology buzzwords that are being used in the industry today. And today we are actually partnering with Verizon, and the topic we'll be covering is mobilization within the workforce. Here's how this will work. This is a listen-only event. If you do have any questions, please chat them in, and we will save time at the end to address as many that we can. Following this session, we will introduce some future topics that we hope you will be inter interested in learning more about. And then you will be receiving an email as well that will contain a short survey that we hope you fill out that will assist us in making the future sessions here more informative. And you will also be receiving a recording of the event that we hope you can forward on to anybody that you think may benefit from this webinar. Uh, the goal of the webinar today is just to educate you more on what's possible with mobile devices within the workforce. Um, the, we hope you find this session valuable and helpful to your business. And then we will introduce today's expert presenters on the mobilization topic. The presenters today will be Kyle Swanda of P&L Technology. And Kyle is the VP of Enterprise Select for P&L Technology. And he helped launch the Enterprise Division is continuing to assist in developing new technology strategies that can help local businesses. The other presenter today will be Steve Bonnets, uh, Verizon Wireless. Steve is a Solutions Architect Manager, and he has been in the wireless industry for 10 years in a variety of roles, mainly supporting their business customers. His current role is Solutions Architect Manager, and his role in that is to help businesses solve key business needs or find additional revenue streams through mobile technology and the Verizon Wireless Network. With that, I will hand things off to Kyle Swanda. All right, man. Thanks for that. Um, I kind of wanted to go over today's topics real quick. The, the things we want to really touch on is, is first defining what is mobile. What are we talking about when we talk about mobile? And then we want to go into what are the things that we can do with mobile? What, um, what are the things that are being done now? What are some specific things, maybe some case studies that people are doing now in their business uh, to, to use mobile? And then what's possible or what's coming down the pipe with mobile? What's the future for mobile? So first things first, uh, what is mobile? Traditionally, most people are familiar with mobile as a, a cell phone or a smartphone. Um, you know, it's, it's starting to see more people using their, their iPads, their Android tablets, um, and obviously a, a big part of that, playing into that in the emerging technology is, is cloud services and how to get any of their content available anywhere, whether it be you know, for fun uh, or, or business. Um, diving into what can be done with mobile and the things we're going to try and touch on today. Um, obviously the big one is, is right now, and, and most people are familiar with it, is email, um, workforce mobilization, uh, business applications, and mobile payments. Uh, when we talk about email, most people have at least one person in their office right now with getting their Exchange email or their Gmail, their Yahoo, their Hotmail on their smartphone. Um, if you talk to most of those people who are using that, they say it's invaluable to their communication inside and outside of the office. Um, and the expectation for a lot of people these days is that their employees be available almost all the time. So there's, there's very little time spent off the clock. You're at least available to respond to, to emails, whether it be a, a business client, uh, a sale you're trying to close, um, you know, a technology need, or something else. Um, we at uh, P&L Technology are seeing Exchange utilized in a number of different ways, whether it be a, an on-site solution or possibly a, a hosted solution through Office 365 or, a, or another provider. Uh, work, moving on to workforce mobilization, this is where we start to get into to where you see some value add in, in doing those things with, with possible routing and dispatch, um, tracking the location of your employees, um, we've seen some specific instances where uh, you've got a, a, <clears throat> a truck rolled out and a few employees in it um, out in the field, and rather than having them come back to the office to pick up the paperwork for the next for the next job site they have to go to, they can be intelligently routed to the to the next uh, location that they need to go to. Um, wireless forms and contracts and contacts, uh, CRM databases, uh, note taking in the field, and expense reports and mileage. Um, basically getting all of that paperwork out of the, the office and available on a, 
on a mobile device so that those field employees or even the employees who are, in the, who are stuck in the office but you'd prefer be out in the field, say salespeople or, uh, or dispatch people, getting them out in the field more and getting them working rather than, than dealing with paperwork. Um, Steve, I think you had a, a few ideas here in, in regards to reduction of costs and business process management, if you want to touch on those real quick. Yeah, thanks, Kyle. Yeah, like Kyle had mentioned, we see uh, a tremendous amount of momentum around these key things. And when you look at, when you look at routing and dispatching and location tracking, uh, especially when mobilizing a workforce, that's where we've seen really the largest uh, dollar savings um, or I guess better control over those assets in the field. So you think about having vehicles out there, um, but whether it be idle times with the gas prices, inefficient routing, uh, and be able to know where those vehicles are <coughs> excuse me, with uh, you know, real time. And that could be either a hard installed unit in the vehicle um, or maybe you need something more portable and there's even devices out there uh, that give you the capability um, to have you know, 30, 60, 90 day battery life that you could throw in the glove box of a truck, uh, move it around from a different piece of equipment, and really give you that flexibility uh, to know where all your assets are. When you think about some of the note taking and, and expense reports and wireless forms, that's really just taking all that, like Kyle said, all that paperwork that you have back at the office or out in the field and, and putting it on an electronic device. And I think what you'll see, you know, especially in the future uh, with things like expense report and mileage, uh, is integration right into your back end system. So you have expense report systems today uh, where people are filing their expenses and having the ability to take a picture of the receipt, upload it right into that expense report system uh, on the go and not have to come back to the office to take care of it. Thanks, Steve. That's, uh, that's good stuff. Um, kind of moving on to the business applications. Really what we're seeing right now is, and we'll, we'll touch on this maybe a little bit later, but really what we're seeing right now is that the business applications are really what's driving mobile. Um, you have to rely on your application provider, whether it be a, you know, a QuickBooks or, or an Act or a CRM uh, application that you're using. You really have to rely on them to kind of drive this and have their application available uh, mobile. But you'll, you'll notice that, and Steve can talk about this a little bit, how they're using remote desktop and, and web-based applications internally um, to increase and provide uh, some efficiencies within their business. Yeah, thanks, Kyle. Uh, I, I think remote desktop is, has been key, especially when you look at uh, tablets and mobile deployments. And it gives you the ability to uh, deploy uh, specific applications across multiple platforms. And, and when you look at the way you know, we internally at Verizon Wireless do things, uh, you know, we're a, a heavy Citrix user. And really what that allows us to do is give our sales force uh, you know, uh, something like an iPad, have them load Citrix right on there, have all that uh, capability of acting like they're on the network, um, whether it be on a customer appointment or out in the field, um, so they can get to their sales systems, uh, service systems, customer records, and really having that security that all that information is sandboxed and never left our corporate environment because they're just viewing it remotely uh, really gives them you know, great functionality and flexibility um, to not have to be in the office. And then web-based applications, um, we've done a lot of that with internal tools and external uh, vendor tools where it gives the ability to have uh, multiple devices deployed. So whether that be Android, iOS, Windows, um, having that ability to access it no matter what device. So you don't have to build that application or access that application from a specific device. You can do it directly from that web-based application uh, really no matter what, what tool you're using to get to it. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're currently um, in the testing phases of well, we've got an iPad in the office and working with our dispatch team to, to dispatch our, our CRM and our ticketing system uh, mobily. Um, before, it would require them to either log into a, a web-based system on, a, on an actual PC or come back to the office to close out of their tickets. But now we're experimenting with, with that iPad, and we give it to our, our field techs, and they're just able to head from one site to the other, enter their notes, um, verify with the the primary contact at a site that the job and the notes that have been entered are correct, and then if possible or if necessary, maybe sign off on a quote or the purchase of additional equipment um, that was needed to, to finish the, the build out or the job that we're doing. 
Uh, moving on to mobile payments, this is a, an interesting area, and I think, Steve, you can probably talk a little bit better about this than, than I can, but really what we're seeing here is, is two different ways. One, one way to take payments, another way to make payments. So there's a number of different providers out there that can take credit card payments on the go. Square is one of them where you just slide the credit card through a little reader on an iPhone, and it will charge your credit card immediately there. And then there's also electronic wallet where you can have your individual credit cards or debit cards within a, an electronic wallet on your smartphone and make payments through that. Yeah, thanks. I, I think what we've seen here, and you mentioned Square, and, that, and that's probably been the most popular and really what's driven uh, this type of uh, technology over the last six months. What we've seen in, in the being able to take credit card payments uh, is really a growth spurt for having a mobile device, uh, especially in the small and medium business space. And there's really two ways to do that. You have the pay by percentage, which like Kyle mentioned, uh, you have Square out there. So you, you simply put the adapter into the headset jack of your iPhone, and you have the ability to take credit card payments. Um, but it's, it's Square is then taking a percentage of that payment uh, for the processing of it into your bank account. Uh, Intuit, so Intuit who, who makes QuickBooks, um, they've come out with their own uh, product similar to Square. Um, the nice part about Intuit is it does uh, now allow integration directly into QuickBooks. So a, a majority of businesses use QuickBooks, and this gives easy integration into those records. The second way we've really seen is a, a more pay per month. So this would be more heavy transactions. Maybe you have a good rate negotiated with your current merchant today for how you're taking payments uh, back in your office. Um, and so you have companies like Charge Anywhere that tie directly into your merchant, and you simply just pay a monthly fee for that service. So if you're taking a lot of payments, uh, you know it might be a $10 fee to, to have a Charge Anywhere account. They tie into your merchant, and you can take that payment, payment on the go. And then the electronic wallet is both how, how you can personally pay for things or how you as a business can accept things. Um, and as you see more and more devices come out with NFC or near field communication, um, like Kyle said, having the ability to put your credit card numbers directly into that electronic wallet and have the ability to just tap your phone for payment and select which credit card you want it to be charged to. Uh, and that's where we're really seeing the, the drive come, you know, and it's going to continue to grow really over the next 6 to 12 months. Yeah, a lot of good points there, Steve. Um, one of the things that we really wanted to talk about next was device management and security. And I'm sure a lot of people who are listening are wondering, well, my credit card information, my business information, and everything else is now being stored on these mobile devices that could be you know, lost in the field or dropped out of my pocket or, or left somewhere else. So how do we prevent some unscrupulous individual from grabbing it and say, get into my, my business applications or looking at those type of things or even using uh, my electronic wallet to, to make payments or, or to uh, – view that type of information or get my credit card number. So what we're seeing right now is that a lot of employees um, do own their own device, uh, bring your own device to work. Um, so it's up to the corporate uh, entity or the, the organization to define what, define what their mobile use policy is going to be. And that can be done through a number of different ways. I think the first thing you have to do is to decide what you feel is acceptable. Is it, is it okay for our employees to use their own device to say access email or our business applications on the go, yes or no. If it is, then what kind of safeguards are we going to put in place to prevent that information from being lost? Are we going to require that they put a password in every 15 minutes to authenticate themselves? Or are we going to require that if they lose their device, they report it by a certain amount of time and that we're going to wipe it remotely and everything's going to be, be lost off of that? Um, what we're seeing now currently that a lot of organizations may not force it by means of a, a mobile device management package or some type of software, but they are writing corporate policies that say, yes or no, it is okay to use your personal device, but if you do, you have to have a password on it. It has to be this length, and it has to be, uh, you know, uh, can't just be 1111 or 2222. So it has to have some form of, of uh, difference in the, in the numbers you're using. Um, Steve, you, you had mentioned when we talked prior that a lot of companies are, are defaulting to BYOD to, to maybe save a little money off of the, the bottom line. Yeah, I, I think we've seen two things really when it comes to the, the, the BYOD or bring your own device. 
uh, you know, the first of which, like you mentioned, is security and, and making sure that the policies and procedures are put in place uh, to manage that, um, whether it be on the application side uh, or just the different types of uses you could have on a mobile device. Uh, I, I think that we've seen the adoption, and I think you mentioned this earlier, Kyle, we, we've seen the adoption of different devices, whether it be iPads, uh, Android tablets, uh, or just you know your simple I iPhone or Android smartphone. Uh, that adoption has really come because of the employees bringing those devices into the work environment uh, and wanting to use those. The second part of that is you know, who manages the devices, whether they are company owned or employee owned. Um, and I think that is a, that's a constant com um, conversation that we are having with business customers uh, on a daily basis. And, and really you know, it comes down to a couple things and that is just you know, similar to writing your own policies. If, if you allow them to bring your own device, you have to figure out what is best uh, for the company. And there is definitely pros and cons. Um, and, and that's just something that, that you have to work through, whether it's a, a cost benefit or, or it's going to cost more to move to that BYOD. Um, so I think there's, there's definitely uh, you know, the pluses and minuses either way you can go. Yeah, definitely. What, what we've seen a lot is that what, what you'll end up happening within your business or your organization is that the end users who do bring in their own iPads or iPhones or Android devices oftentimes will be leading that discussion. They'll be saying, here's some applications I want to try out, or here's some applications I want to use. And they're really starting to drive those discussions towards, towards mobilization as opposed to having a, an IT uh, engineer or, or someone from the IT department coming to you and saying, here's what we need to do, or here's some of the strategic moves we need to make. We're seeing that the, the end user is, is a, it's definitely more involved in the, in the usage of those applications and those devices. Uh, which which kind of drives into the future of what's happening. Like I said already, a lot of that stuff's very much application driven. But if you look at the hardware that's starting to come out, Microsoft just announced their their Windows 8 hardware to compete with the iPad. Um, Android devices are being updated every day. Um, Apple obviously is going to continue to innovate in the in the field that they even started to define no less than three years ago. So I think Steve, you you had a a few thoughts on the on the application part and and how that's starting to drive the the vision of the future. Yeah, I th I think that we see it both with you know as a business with internal applications and what we can do with things like CRM software or remote desktops and then the external apps. So it's being able to to carry that device and have your your applications um, both for business and for pleasure uh, and carrying that all in one device. I think when you think of things like the iPad and, and what Apple has done you know, with the industry, that's really driven by what I would call app-enabled accessories. Um, so you have an app and you have some sort of tool um, alongside your iPad that gives you additional benefits. So uh, Kyle, you talked earlier about taking notes, uh, you know, having your notebook now on your iPad. So you have things like rubber tip stylus that are a little different than uh, the stylus that you may have seen on a smartphone in the past. Um, Keyboards. Um, so you think about Logitech and, and different companies that have now went into the, the tablet accessory business. Um, and Logitech has just launched a uh, ultra thin keyboard that uh, snaps on with the smart magnets on the side of the iPad, and and it's almost like you have a, a mini laptop in a sense um, that doesn't really make the iPad much thicker than it is uh, without any accessories on it. And then taking into things like personal accessories. So you know, do, are you a, a fitness guru? You know, do your kids like to play games? Uh, or maybe it's just a toy helicopter, but it's it's taking the iPad and, and using it with additional things outside of the the the, the normal sense uh, of what an app can do and and how it's connected to remote devices. Awesome, thanks, Steve. Um, Matt, do we have any uh, uh, questions, or did anybody have any questions they'd like to ask? Yeah, yeah. At this point, we'll we'll start taking some questions. And if you do have any further questions, feel free to type them into the uh, chat box and we'll work to answer them. The first question that did come in was, do you see a trend of businesses using Droid tablets or iPads more, and, and why is that? Well, I, I think that we, we see a, a mixture of both, and a lot of it can depend on the business needs. Um, we talked a lot about applications today, and, and that can really drive a lot of adoption towards iOS just because the, the sheer number of applications that are out there. What we've seen on the Android front, however, is 
uh, an initiative called the, the Blank Slate Tablet, and, and that's an a Android tablet that has nothing loaded on it. So when you think about putting some sort of device uh, like a tablet out with your field employees, uh, you, you know you may want something that you're just going to put the applications on there that can that can do those key business needs so they're not downloading Angry Birds or anything else. You just want their wireless forms, uh, the ability to take payments. And with those Android tablets that have nothing preloaded, you can load the specific applications you want. Uh, some of them come ruggedized. Some of them come with uh, mag card strip readers you know, built right into the end of them. Uh, and it really gives your field employees the ability to be more productive. Um, you know, without having the, the distractions of some of the other applications in the App Store. So I think the answer is depending on the business need, we've, we've seen a little bit of both. All right, great. The next question we have is uh, industry specific. It says, within the construction industry, are more businesses using tablets for their project managers and other uh, field people? You know, it's, that's one of the industries that we're starting to see a lot of this take off. Um, that, the services industry, um, architecture and engineering industries are all starting to put those devices in the hands of their field employees. It allows them to, oh, for example, if you're in a construction firm, take a, a plan or the plans that you've got when you're doing a walkthrough and you can, as you're walking through, you've got that plan directly in front of you and you can make notes depending on where you're, what stage in, in construction you're in directly on the plan and then send that back to the office and have it filed within your current business uh, business process or business document management software. Um, we're also seeing it quite a bit in the services industry. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, internally we're, we're testing an application for intelligent routing and dispatch so that we don't have to have our employees come all the way back to the office just to check in and see where their next appointments are at. They can be intelligently routed and dispatched. Or if you've got, say, 10, 15 employees out in the field and you get a phone call in and it's an emergency, you can say, okay, here's you know, Johnny. He's the closest to this, this location and he's going to be finished up in the next 10 minutes. I can tell that, that client or that customer that we're going to be there within a, a certain amount of time and then just intelligently route Johnny to that specific pos position or that location. All right, next question was, uh, if I have a strictly PC environment and Windows environment, how does that work in integrating iPhones and iPads within the network? A lot of it, like we had said, already depends on the, the application provider. It, it can certainly integrate very well as long as the applications you're currently using support an iPad or a, an Android tablet or, or any type of mobile device. Um, Steve, did you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great point. And I think what we tend to see at this point is the, the typical things that you come to expect out of a device like email and those things you know, are going to be supported with Exchange Active Sync right on the device. When you move into to additional things like applications, um, we, we've seen two, two sides of that. One is um, there's been a slow migration um, for companies that have written applications to run on a, a Windows-based computer to move it to uh, a mobile environment. So we either see the, you know, the end business forcing uh, their application provider to, to look that direction or they're looking at migrating away from that type of application into something that has been built uh, for a mobile device. All right, and the final question that was chatted in is, are many companies going towards a cloud solution? I think <clears throat> in order to answer that, you really have to define what cloud is and what you're looking to achieve from it. Um, if you look at it from a, a simple email standpoint, you know, my email is hosted by someone else. I don't have an on-site exchange server. Then yes, a lot of companies have already moved in that direction towards a, uh, a, a one or two services within the cloud. If you look at some of the solutions that we're starting to put together where we're hosting desktops in the cloud, we have quite a few people migrating towards that as well, which just allows them to, to put either a, a thin terminal or a dumb terminal or a, a cheaper PC at the desktop and still provide those applications and, that, and those uh, uh, needs from, from a hosted area rather than having to have any, any type of servers or devices on site outside of those thin clients. So it really depends on what you're trying to achieve. Um, it also, again, depends on the application provider. Are they providing a cloud-based solution already? Um, you know, QuickBooks, for example, is has already started looking at, at putting together a cloud-based solution for QuickBooks. Now it's not as full-featured as the, the desktop version, 
but they are moving that direction. All right, that is all for the uh, question and answers. Uh, we are running a little short on time, but we do encourage you, if you do have any additional questions, uh, feel free to contact uh, myself, Steve, or Kyle. And we will, uh, once again, be sending the recording of this event out. So please pass it along to anyone that you think could uh, benefit from this material. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this session. Here at P&L Technology, we'd like to thank uh, Verizon for partnering up with this for this event. And we will be posting details regarding our next webinar, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, once again, thanks again for your time, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Please stand by.